Good morning and welcome to Locked in Stitches. It is a, it's, it's a weird day today. It's warm, but it's kind of blustery as well. Yes, very blustery. Um, there's, there's a real heavy wind, but it's 22 degrees. It's amazing. We haven't had that in forever. Um, so, as I said, good morning. As always, I am Julie Hall. Thank you so much for joining us this morning as we look at creating these beautiful rope trivets. You can see that Louise Fredericks is with me. Thank you for joining me, Louise. Oh, my pleasure. I'm just going to come through and make sure that this is working on this end as well. So how is everyone going? Have you had a good week? Okay, well that's setting up there. Let me come over. Can I can I get you to pass me those yes. trivets there? And the embroidered one that I left on your desk over there. Okay. So today we are going to do the embroidered rope trivet. I went to good old Kmart last week. Mm -hmm. um, and if anyone's after Christmas um, tea towels, they had red and green. Oh, no. Nice. Just with little sort of dashes through them. But I liked this grey set because I thought they kind of went well with that. Mm. Um, and I'm making these for Louise's um, next fate, which is in aid of... Uh, a food bank store. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then I got... I'll use up the rest of my... Um, beige macrame cord and I thought that will go quite nicely yes, with those ones. Yes, lovely. So, you know, I, I really am using up what I've got and not spending a ton of money. No. But I tell you what, I was quite impressed. Let me come and show you what I found on Etsy because I think, I always think it's interesting just to see um, what people are doing and ideas and things like that. And the rope trivet thing is quite popular on Etsy. And they're going for a fairly reasonable price. How much like, are they selling them for? So, um, like, they've got a single fabric wrapped one for $26. Oh, wow. Um, a set of four coasters for $20. Um, like, it is a current trend at the moment. And then I went in and looked up the tea towels as well because in my mind, I like the idea of doing the tea towel and the and the trivet together so that they kind of match. Mm. Um, and, yeah, things... I mean, quite honestly, there's not a world where I'm going to pay 20 bucks for a monogram tea towel. Um, I'm, I'm just, this is things that do up my thing. But if it's something that you were interested in doing um, to make some money, there is some out there to be made with that. And I can see we've got Pauline Stewart with us. Good morning. And Ray Smith and Helen Cassidy. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so this morning I'm going to work with this macrame cord that I got from Bunnings and it is a four millimeter cord. When I did these ones, they were six millimeter cord um, and this is a lot heavier, um, but I do love the look of it. And I've gone through and I've found the best cotton fabric or sorry thread that I can find in my stash to match it because I want to do it as close as possible by the same token can you pass me that multicolored thread there? oh that's pretty you could turn instead of embroidering on it you could turn it into something um different just by making it with that multicolored thread mm. The reason I don't do that is my stitching's not that perfect. Mm. Now, what I've learned over the years doing these and having them go floopy is 
that I am best off working in the same direction as the cord was wound in. So I'm not going to put this on the floor and wind it up like that because it gets extra Curl. curls in it. Instead, I'm leaving it beside my machine and I'm going to pull and unwind from it. Mm. So that's the first trick that I've found. And we've got um, Brenda Snyder. Thank you for joining us. And Gail Z. Thank you again as well. Okay. So let's come over and look how to create these. So, but at the same time, you've got lots of it um, unwound. So I've wound, unwound a couple of meters of it yeah. just to make sure. And I'll show you. And that's what I did wrong yesterday. Just to pull it out and make sure that it was sitting straight. And it's yes. always it's always a gamble doing that because you never know how much you're going to use. Yes. Well, I only yesterday let half a metre unwound. Okay. So therefore mine still went loopy. Yep. So but that was my first attempt. Oh, exactly. So, so all I've done here is got a tiny bit of sticky tape and wrapped it around the end and then I'm going to cut even that off, half of that off, so that there is an even smaller amount of sticky tape. And that is just to hold everything together in that first position. Oh right, because I cut that off completely. Okay. So that's a good idea. And then, now there is method in my madness as to why I'm winding this way around because if I was to go with my natural thought process I would wind like this. However, the thread or the, the cord is always going to sit on the inside of the machine so I need to wind this way around and to start us off we're just going to create a little snail's house of a couple of winds and then I'm going to come through and remind my machine to wake up and using just a straight stitch stitch that little part of the circle there then come across the opposite direction And then what you've got is a surface to start on. Mm -hmm. So from there, I'm just going, because the less thread I have hanging around, the better I generally feel. Mm -hmm. Now, what to set your zigzag on? Now I can see we've got some more messages there, so I'm just going to check that first. Uh, and Carol Bow from Montreal and Canada. Thank you for joining us, Carol. Okay. And I'm going to come over here and show you my machine screen. Now, this was a 6mm cord, so when I chose my zigzag, I made that six millimeters wide. And oh. then I figured I was getting half and half. Oh, good. That was my theory. When you think about it, and the picture on the screen is so inaccurate in what it shows you. I mean, that looks massive. It's less than three millimeters. And I took this all the way out to four millimeters. Now, you can see the difference in the thread that I'm using this time. 
So I am going to take it down to 5 millimeters and about 3.5. Now I can change that as I go if that doesn't suit me. But the size of your zigzag will change depending on what your um, on the size of your rope. And Sylvia Zant, Manny and Donahue. Hello from Halliday's Point. I've heard of Halliday's Point. I think that's near Foster. So does it also depend on um, whether it's the centre or on the outside? No. Okay. Once you've got that zigzag set. Okay. Now, things that I do set on my machine, I'll come back for just a second and go back to my settings. Um, first thing I set is press a foot lift when you stop. Mm -hmm. So the needle is going to stay down, but the presser foot's going to lift up mm -hmm. to allow me to um, to manipulate where that circle is. The other thing that I want to change, and this is in the settings on my machine, um, most machines will have the option. Some of them have it up the top and there's only a limited amount that you can change it. But I came through and when I was doing the six millimeter, I changed my presser foot pressure to plus four and I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit and all that's doing is how high that foot's lifting. Yeah. Okay. And let me just make sure that I'm giving you guys a good enough view and then I'll try and work out how in the hell I'll see as well. And all I'm going to do is, and I start off slow, All I'm trying to do is keep this cord and the snail at that halfway point. And often I do better when I actually, certainly on these first couple of um, rows around, when I really slow down the ability of my machine mm. on how quickly it can stitch. Don't worry, I will get quicker. I won't totally bore you, I hope. Now, the other trick that I've learned, as well as having to pull these together as we go, is to um, keep everything flat. And if you don't have a table on your machine like I do, stack books around it. Books are those things that were used before iPads. <laughs> I still will use a book. My brain does not like reading from iPads. I thought I would miss the smell of the book, as you know, as stupid as that sounds. But oh no, I'm loving having 500 books in one easy place. Right up until um, you know, the time that I left the Kindle. On, or the tablet on top of my car and drove away. Oh no. That would be very sad. Okay, so it's getting easier now that it's getting a little bit larger. Now, what I will say, and I'm going to go back up and make this, I'm going to change my width to five and a half just because I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me. And quite honestly, when we're talking about this, we're talking about half a millimetre. 
isn't it amazing the things that we forget when you know when we're doing sewing and we you know start to get involved in what we're doing like mm. half a millimeter and I'm also going to just speed my or allow my machine to speed up just a little bit more Yes, we went to Halliday's Point, where Sylvia's from, I think. It must have been four years ago. Because Mum was still around. Mal was still around. Where's Halliday's Point? Near Foster. Oh, okay. It's got a really nice... Um, sorry, I'm just bumping that there. I can feel it. Um, it's got a really nice... Um, beach caravan park with cabins. Okay, so you can see that I'm not lifting this because as soon as you lift it, you start turning it into a bowl or a vase. But it does get easier the larger you go. I spent most of yesterday driving around the ACT because Cam I wanted to register the car. Oh. So we had to drive all the way over to Hume, which like that makes me a total ACT -in, complaining about that half hour drive. I realise this. Um, which car were you registering? The black one. Oh. Um, it didn't pass. So this afternoon I'm going back. Now as you're going along, check your size if it's important to you. Now, you can freeform these and make them whatever size you want. I wanted mine to be about the same size. So I kept, um, so I keep on checking as I'm going. Yes. Well, you told me I had to make mine eight inches. <laughs> So I kept on thinking that one is eight inches. <laughs> And it really is a slow and steady one. I mean, the first couple of these that I did in the, with the smaller rope. Um, forever. Well, no, I did them quite quickly and they were crap. Um, <laughs> They would, there were holes everywhere, there was, yeah. so yeah, I've learnt the, um, the thing of the slow and steady. And if you do end up with a hole, just go and re-stitch it. Just zigzag stitch over just that bit. But that's the main reason that I do it in colour match thread, because I suck. <laughs> and if I was going to use a beautiful decorative thread, odds are I would stuff it up. And it does make it easier for... Um, For embroidery as well and that's the reason I've gone with a cotton thread because the macrame cord is such a natural 
when I did the dark grey one, I did use an embroidery thread because it was the best match that I had for that dark grey. And it looks nice. Okay. So you can see how that is then coming along. And it's finding your own sweet spot. Okay. And now So my thread is here and I'm just winding that straight from the roll. Yeah. so many of these on Sunday was simply because I went and got my fourth vaccination or my booster um, and I was just feeling just that little bit zonked my arm was hurting I couldn't decide what to do so I started making one trivet to get myself um, ready for class and that just turned into six but I used up the entire thing of the cork so you know yay me I'm sure there are people around who've worked out the math on how much cord it takes. No. Stuffed if I know. You just make what you've got. And the other thing that I've learned is I don't pull this cord too tight because that's the other thing. And you can see, just as a natural thing, that is now just beginning to ever so slowly curl up, sit up. So yes, we've gone and we've put two new tyres on Camo's car. So he walked down, I drove it down this morning. Um, and then Ubered home. He's just gone down to um, to pick it up, and then we replaced a headlamp, and we're hoping that'll get him through Red Joe now, because that's the only two things they said he had to fix. So where do you have to go to get it? Hume. We have to go all the way out to Hume. Um, so we have to go out there and I'm just going to measure again and see where I'm at. So what I'm looking for is 8 inches which is 20 centimetres. So you measure across that middle and I can see I've still got a fair whack to go. If I was doing these, I did actually think if I was doing these for um, and wanted an absolutely perfect matching set, what I might do is put a marking on here when I got to that um, yeah. eight inch mark so that I knew exactly what I was aiming for. That's another thing I did wrong yet last night. I had it sitting the other way round. Um, and it, it had to go up yes. that little bit. Yeah. That's that's a great one. I hadn't even considered that. So Louise had her trivet flipped over and was doing it the other way. Yeah, so I learned that was a learning curve for me. So You don't realise how quickly you use up um, 
once once you start the bigger circles. Yeah. These would be very nice to make for Christmas. Yes. And quite honestly, um, I mean, we're going to Melbourne this year, um, but, you know, when it gets to even siblings and things, like, you don't want anything big, but, and God knows after cleaning through Dad's house, I've learnt the joy of throwing away this year. It is, I'm always surprised how quickly the, the space adds on to it. Mm. <laughs> so how many of these have you done, including your bowls now? <laughs> Too many. Okay, so we're coming up there. I reckon I've got another round. And I kind of like the fact that there's no start and stop. No. But still, it's not a long project to do. No. So if you were doing this for a store, you could virtually... Um, okay. And I reckon we're about at that 20 centimetre mark, you know? So, so you could virtually make one um, while the embroidery was going, you can sew the next one. That's right. And, uh, that's, and really, that's what you're after. Okay, so this is my trivet. And I, so what I'm going to do is, again, grab just that tiny little piece of sticky tape. And it doesn't matter where you choose to finish it. I'm just thinking... Okay, that'll make a nice little loop mm. on the end there. And then I'm going to halves is that. And all I do is poke that in and then stitch along that fold edge. Okay. And our trivet is now complete. Oh, that's nice. Now let me just make sure we've got no other thing here. All good. Okay. Now Next thing I want to show you is how I put on, and I'm just looking at what colours of scraps I've got here. We might use a cork scrap. Yes, I like that cork. Okay. So what I'm going to do to hide this is just put on, and it can be leather, cork, vinyl, just a little cover mm. and so I've trimmed that to about an inch and then 
Now, my trick is I want it to look best from the front. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Depending on how long a piece you've got, you can do it all in a single stitch if you've held everything together nicely. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got a minimal amount, stitch the piece on the back and then come over and stitch on the front. Mm -hmm. But because I've got a nice sort of big piece of cork there, what I'm going to do is just fold that over. And again, I'm using the same cotton thread. Oops. You just want a straight stitch. Change to your straight stitch. <laughs> Live and learn. And I'm going to follow the curve. So I'm just moving. while we curve, while we follow the curve of that. That does leave it denser at that, like mm. it is whatever you choose. And then all I'm going to do is... Oh, you're stitched in the ditch, so to speak. Yeah, is trim it up. And you've got your cover on. Yep, looks good. Okay, so now we are ready to embroider. So I am going to come through. And that has frozen for some reason. Let's make sure that's going. Okay. I need to go back into embroidery mode. Colours, colours, colours. What to do? What I have here is my different tea towels. And what I actually thought, and tell me if you disagree, because I'm doing these for Louise's um, stall, is I thought if I embroider the darkest grey that I've got, almost to black mm. on this one, but then go a really pale grey on, on that one. Yeah. Does that work for you? Yes. Okay. So, the next joy that we have is how to secure the trivet. And the easy answer is, you kind of don't. Now, you can come through and pop on a little bit of um, like the double sided tape, double sided basting tape. And the only trick that I do to that, because I don't like to sew over that double sided tape, so I'm putting it outside of the stitching area. Yeah. So if that's our stitching area in here, you can see that that is just outside of that. And if you're a confident stitcher, just hold it down and your, your trivets come out nice and flat, just hold it down for the first couple of stitches. Either way is fine. Now, the other trick that I've found that I didn't always do is make sure that your um, trivet is equal. My, my mind, because this is where my cross is in the middle, would try and put it like that. 
but I want it so that when it's hanging up in the kitchen, it's going to be straight. And then our center point and Oh, don't you hate it when um, I'm looking for, I found it, looking for just a pin. No, oh, well, crappy needle will do as well. Okay. So, center to center and top. And that is where we want to place the trivet ready for stitching. Now I can see that I've got an extra thread there. Okay, so now my decisions are based on what design to use. The designs in the Herbs and Spices collection, um, you've got the vanilla, star anise, nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon and chili. And today I'm going to use the star anise so I'm going to send that to my embroidery link software and then send it through to the machine and We then have that design ready to go. Changing back to an embroidery foot is always a good thing. Yeah. And slow it down. today only. Where would your black bottles be? Somewhere safe. <laughs> and thread colour. that almost whitish grey so that's the the grey that we've decided to go with so I've slowed the machine right the way down yeah you didn't need to wouldn't you because it's so thick um now do you need to put a layer on the top no because it's not fluffy. Oh! Oops, it is. Yeah, that's interesting. I would have thought you'd need a... And... So we're down to 400 stitches a minute. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry that that's being pixelated. Um, they turned our NBN, or they they were doing NBN work this week, and they have taken us from ADSL to 5G 
and husband is not happy. Now, once you're happy with how it's stitching, that's when you can play a little with things like speed. So what's everybody else been up to this week? My darling sister called last night. She was having her, um, and we generally talk to each other while she's on her drive home from work. Um, so she, <laughs> She called me and we were just, you know, complaining as sisters do. Um, they had their Father's Day dinner last night with all their children. Um, which was lovely. Except for what her husband chose as his Father's Day dinner. He wanted curry sausages. And it's never been something that um, that sort of, yeah, my mother ever made. Okay, so Brenda has been working to get some scrub tops. Oh, ponytail scrub caps for co-workers. That's lovely. What a lovely thing to do. Margs, Crosby's getting ready for a week in Ridge Street. Lucky ducky. Although in my Mother of the Year um, goal, I ended up doing um, the midnight run to Coles last night to pick him up because his car hadn't passed. But then Edward's outside at nine o'clock trying to work out how to replace the amber indicator lot. So, thankfully, 
What was that saying? That was the cold drop of ant no, Yes. Like yes. So I do think he probably got the worst of the two. Um, like at least I just had to walk out to the car and I kept the heater on the entire time I was waiting for him. Um, so he came back and had a glass of wine and, um, and then went to bed. Whereas I stayed up till, till midnight. So Louise, the one that Louise made at home, she's done hers with um, a really beautiful blush pink and um, <coughs> somewhere between a petrol green and a really dark teal is what I'd say the thread, the fabric was or the thread. Okay, Gail is asking what colour thread on the bottom, I'm just using Bob and Phil Gail. Um, now, it so happens that it is kind of matchy. with a lot of sprays um, just because they seem to clag up the needle I do like the way that's coming out though. The stitching's lovely. Like it's it's looking lovely on the um, on the rope. I've nearly finished using up all of my um, all of my excess um, little bits of thread that I had left over from the classes, and I'm just waiting on hearing back from um, for anybody who is in Queensland. I'm waiting to hear back from expertise to see if they can do me an amazing deal to teach some classes at the Brisbane Craft and Built Fair. So keep an eye out. They're just looking to see what they can do. Are you going to teach the camera? No. So it's the same people. Um, unfortunately though, the price for doing Brisbane is the same as the price for doing Canberra fundamentally. And it's such a smaller area that there's just not the money in it. Right.
you know, I'd pay more in a stand than I'd make in the weekend. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I do love about these designs is that they are fairly quick. Yeah, so there is a lot of stitches in them, like they're 10,000 stitches. I'm stitching at 400 stitches a minute, and I'm halfway done. Louise and I were laughing as we both chose the, um, the Star Anise. And Louise has never cooked with it before and I was saying Edward loves to throw it in the stocks. But it becomes quite overpowering. And one of the one of the COVID things I think, I just cannot handle the smell of the of the star anise in something. So you just throw it into a chicken. Into, like yeah, Edward just throws it into the stock pot when he makes stock. So how many would he throw into a stock pot? He's probably throwing three in, so I'd only use one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh well, I'll, I'll have a look. I think I yeah. actually have some in my because I make my own stock. Okay. so nicely I'm just going to turn it up just that little oh, Marinate. So what kind of marinate 
Um. I generally I marinate them in like honey barbecue sauce, orange juice. Um. What else is in it? Mustard. And then you just slow cook them on the um, on the barbecue. Okay, and I can see Bon Bon Miel has just popped in and is asking, did we make the trivet? Uh, we sure did. Okay, I can see that that is glitching a little. So let me try and make that better for you. Oh, Gail, I'm so glad you enjoyed the Townsville Craft Show. We had such a great time. <clears throat> and good heavens, the weather's so much nicer up there. <laughs> and you can see, even though that centre... Yes, it is supposed to. Okay. So you can see, even though that centre wasn't zigzag, you really can't it's tell really that. So it's supposed to be looped around. Otherwise, what you might find is, because of that bubble in the centre, it's just not... Horrible. Yes. That's okay, I'm not worried. No, I think the hardest thing about coming back after um, spending three weeks in Queensland was getting used to the colder weather again. Mm, okay, so what I wanted to show you. When we come to doing our tea towel, and I am loving the size of this Kmart tea towel. You know, for the three for five dollar pack, I think that's kind of a good deal. Um, I've marked up my center point so that I can lay that in the hoop. What I don't want to do, and what you can see is already happening from these towels being part of a set, is because they are waffle weave, they have an element of stretch to them. What I don't want to do is enhance that stretch. So, instead what I'm going to do is baste the design into my hoop. Um, because you really don't want any excess stretch in that waffle. Now, when you've got, when you're looking at displaying them, after you've embroidered, I'd just go the, the fold again, but you can steam that back into alignment 
if you don't like that floopy part there. Okay. So now it's going to start stitching my wording. Now the compulsive in me really wants to trim all of this lettering as I go. Never do what I do. That's how I got the needle in my finger. And that is my embroidery done. And what I can do, and I can see Jean Reads with us as well. Thank you for joining us, Jean. Now, brutal honesty, because of the what rope is, some of the letters, and you can see where that E is. You're just losing that last little part of the E. If I did that again, it would be totally different. Um, not because of anything I did, just because of where the letters were sitting. I can then come through and remove that excess stabiliser. Now, depending on how compulsive you are, depends on how much stabiliser you will want to remove. It's a good TV job for the leaves. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know, the repair shop's on tonight. Yep. Oh, I did finish the 12, though. <gasps> that was good. I do like some Sam Neil. But don't they do wonderful things in that repair shop? Oh, that lady who does all the leather stuff. Oh, amazing. And also the, um, the pottery shop. Oh, great pottery throwdown. Yes. You know why I started watching that? It doesn't make me a good person or anything. But a whole lot of stuff that they say sounds dirty. So it makes a really good drinking game. Oh, right. <laughs> You know, they always want, um, they don't want any dirty bottoms and they don't want any. No. <laughs> um, so this is my finished Star Anise Trivet. 
which I'm now going to finish off by putting together um, my towel. And I'll send pictures, I'll post pictures of the finished product. Okay. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really do appreciate you spending some of your time with us. Um, Kim Warren and Jean Reed, thank you for um, for joining us. And until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.